Okay, what I'm going to attempt to do is show how to set up uh, Engine Drive, the Engine Driver app, to use one of the cheap and one of the cheapest of the game pads that are available from eBay. Uh, they cost about two or three dollars. So we've got our basic game pad. Um, what we do have to do is make sure that it's been switched to game mode, which is a little switch at the side, uh, which is good. And the first thing we're going to need to do is pair it with our phone. So to get into pairing mode in this particular one, you press and hold until the little light starts blinking, which it should do in a moment. There we go. I think. Yep, there we go. All right, then we go into our settings on our phone. We go to Bluetooth. Bluetooth's already on and it's searching for the nearby devices, so it's found this device as a McCute something or other, which will do, and it'll pair and the, the light should stop blinking when it's finished pairing. Okay. And of course it's having troubles. Okay, it's got it. So the light's gone out, so we're paired, that's great. Okay. The other thing that we have to do, out of the box these are set for the wrong mode. And the only, there is theoretically you should be able to press a start in the triangle and it should change, but I found that the only way reliably I can do that is actually turn it off and do it from a power up. So you turn it off by holding it until it stops blinking, that's off. Hold the little triangle down, the delta, and turn it on, and that should be enough. And it should now be in the correct MTK mode that we're going to use. The other modes sort of work, the iOS mode, the iCade mode does work, but uh, I find in this particular case the M MTK mode works better. So I'm going to start Engine Driver now and connect to a server. And we're going to go into our preferences. And we're going to find the gamepad preferences. Just there, and we need to turn on, uh, set the type. As I said, it's McCute and it's MTK. So that should be enough that we need all we need to do. We can test it straight away by going to the test settings now. And when I press up, yep, there we go, down, right, left, and the four keys. And the fifth key actually is the start key, which acts as an enter. So that's all working correctly. So, to try and control the train now with it, just backing out of the preferences, I'm going to select a train, a loco as usual, and now I should be able to, oh, sorry, I should say, the very first thing it's going to do is force a test, and it'll do that every time um, uh, engine driver starts up. You can bypass it, there are options for bypassing it, but I'll go through the full test, which is to, to move through all eight major sequences, so up, down, left, and right, or right and left and the four but major buttons. So that now proves to Engine Driver that you've got a functioning gamepad and it will accept the commands. So right, I've got some odd settings there with my controls, but anyway that's basically working. So right and left, give me forward and reverse. Uh, that's actually set by default as a stop. We should have lights and bell and horn. Horn is pressed to hold, the other two are locking or latching. Um, what we've got also by default, if I remember correctly, the start button is set to swap. Yes, it is. So we've got multiple throttles. So that's the basic gamepad setup. As I said, you have to go through that um, test sequence every time you restart Engine Driver and reconnect your your uh, device. You don't need to go through the uh, mode setting sequence, the start and the triangle. Uh, that should be done and set for life and, until you change phones. Um, but um, yeah, it's just a matter of, of the start and the shutdown. So the final shutdown, if I'm finished with it, get out of engine driver. So as I said, press and hold until it stops blinking and then let go. Okay, um, there we go.